After hearing our gospel this morning, joy might not be the first adjective that comes to mind when we think of St. John the Baptist. Maybe crazy, eccentric, irascible, unpredictable. These seem to better match the description provided in Scripture of this wilderness prophet. And yet, from the first moments of his life in the womb of his mother Elizabeth, it's John the Baptist who leaps for joy when he comes into the presence of the Blessed Mother who is with child. Along the banks of the River Jordan, it's John the Baptist who cries out, Behold the Lamb of God, when he sees Jesus walking along the hillside. What else but joy could have filled his heart when he saw the one he had come to announce? Even while in prison, he sent a message to Jesus asking if he was indeed the Messiah, not so that he could get liberated from prison, but so that while he was imprisoned, he could still experience the joy of knowing that the Messiah had come. John the Baptist is a figure of joy because he was singularly devoted to Jesus. Joy is not having everything that we want, but it's having the one thing that we need. John didn't need anything else. He didn't need fame. In fact, he didn't want it because it would have been a distraction for him. He didn't want a whole pack of followers because it would have tempted him to focus on himself. He was concerned only about one thing, announcing the presence of Christ to the world. And by doing that one thing, the one thing that he was made to do, he was filled with unimaginable joy. And this is why we so desperately need the figure of John the Baptist today. Because frankly, we are not ready to receive the Lord in his fullness. Jesus is simply too much for us. The light of Christ is too bright for our darkened eyes. The love of Christ is too great for our hardened hearts to be able to absorb. We need the voice of the Baptist crying out in the wilderness, telling us to repent, not so that we can feel bad about ourselves or so that we can be weighed down by guilt and shame, but so that we can acknowledge that we're not ready we're not ready because God is so great. He is so abundant in his love for us. And so the first task of repentance is not acknowledging our own sins, but the first task of repentance is recognizing the greatness of God. And friends, I think this is so important for us to, to realize the call to repentance is not first about recognizing our sinfulness, but it's first about recognizing the greatness and the goodness of God as he comes to us. You know, the church doesn't invite people to confession so that we can beat ourselves up about the sins that we've committed. Nor was this the primary aim of St. John the Baptist. The church invites us to the sacrament of confession so that we can confess first the great love and boundless mercy of God. This is what we're confessing first, his power to forgive. In other words, the church isn't saying, come tell us how bad you are. The church is saying to us, come and let me tell you how good God is, how much he loves you, how much he de desires to forgive you and embrace you and bring you back to himself. It's our joy that God wants, probably more than we could even think of wanting it. God wants our joy so much. And sometimes I think that we hold back 
We hold back because we're afraid of, of judgment. We're afraid of maybe what the priest might think of us the next time he sees us, as if we could remember those things. But I notice that I do this myself. When I go to confession, sometimes I kind of try to, you know, soften the blow for the priest. I, I kind of soften my sins so that, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not putting too much on him, worried that he might judge me in some way. It's amazing how the devil gets into our minds and our hearts. But by not laying it all out there, by not being honest with all of my sins, I leave the confessional with just a bit of regret. Regret that I, that I didn't allow the Lord to give me the fullness of joy that he wanted to give me. Because I kept that little sin to myself. And I thought in my mind, well, that's not, that's not big enough. That's not, that's not such a big sin. I'll just keep that to myself and so I don't confess it. And then I leave thinking, man, I wish I would have said it. Because God just wants to fill that space with his joy. God gives us the fullness of joy only in so far as we're willing to let go of our sin. It's like a, you know, it's like going to the doctor for cancer and we say, well, he got most of it and that's enough. I can deal with the, with the rest of it that's in there. No, God wants it all. God wants to completely heal us. God wants us to be totally healed and purified so that only joy resides in our souls. God wants all of our sins to be taken away, friends, and we have to let it go. We have to name it and let it go so that God can forgive it and replace it with his joy. God wants to give us a heart like John the Baptist that is focused only on him. Honestly, you know, this is why here at the parish we talk so much about stewardship. You know, this is not about uh, some competition that we get more volunteers than Holy Rosary does down the road or that our Sunday giving is better than everybody else's. It's not a, some sort of competition or it's not about guilting people into doing things. It's doing precisely what John the Baptist does. He came to receive the mission that God had given to him and to carry out that mission in this world. That is stewardship. Receiving what the Lord gives and offering it for the sake of our brothers and sisters. It's for our joy that the church invites us to be good stewards, to be good disciples, to be good missionaries in this world. It's for our joy, our joy, because in serving in that way, we're filled more fully with the presence of God. And so friends, let's use this season of preparation well. Let's use these next two weeks of the season of Advent to really open ourselves to the gifts that God wants to give. And let's pray that we can, like John the Baptist, be witnesses of his presence in the world so that all may know that Christ has come and so that all can experience the joy that he desires to give.